What I've got for you today should be an amazing match of StarCraft 2. I'm very excited to introduce to you in the bottom left hand corner of Raduset Station. Playing with the blue Terran SCVs, we have Maru. The man who has been leading the South Korean StarCraft 2 scene for many, many years, and I don't really get to cast his games nearly as frequently as I would like to, because he only signs up for the biggest tournaments in the world. When there's $100 on the line, Maru is not going to play. When there's a thousand dollars on the line, Maru is not going to play. You're going to have to bring out at least like 20 grand before Maru decides to sign up for your tournament. His opponent though, in this best of five series, the number one protos from South Korea. We're looking at none other than Hero's main Nexus. Now, I do feature Hero on the channel quite a bit, because Hero, he effectively signs up for everything, but this should be an absolute banger of a match. I get to cast, for example, Clem versus Max Packs all the time, right? And those two are very in sync, incredibly good at the game. But yeah, Hero versus Maru is certainly a little bit more rare, and obviously they compete over in Korea, which works out a bit differently. So this particular series is from the ESL Masters tournament, so this is the last tournament of the year. $75,000 total prize pool for that particular event, and apparently... Yeah, Maru is willing to roll out of bed for 75 grand, okay? That's, yeah, he's even willing to fly across the globe for it. Maru really does not play in a whole lot of online events. Like, all jokes aside, unless it's like a qualifier for a bigger tournament, he generally speaking only signs up for the biggest tournaments. I'm not exactly sure as to why that is, because... A lot of players out there, right? Or a lot of players out there. Like a couple of players out there. Maru could certainly be amongst them. They make like a hundred, maybe a hundred and fifty thousand a year playing pretty much just online tournaments, right? I'm actually, I'm actually gonna look this up. How much has Max Specs earned in 2023? Maybe I'm overestimating this a little bit, because Max Specs exclusively plays online. So yeah, Max Specs's total earnings are at about hundred and five thousand dollars. I would imagine the majority of that has been in 2023, but I might be slightly off. Anyways, if you combine playing all those online events with some offline tournaments as well, Maru can certainly make a pretty penny. Now obviously he's got like 1.2 million dollars in total earnings throughout his career. So I guess Maru just doesn't want to play the online events, which is certainly is right, but I would like to cast him more frequently. I guess I'm just being a little selfish here. Interestingly enough, game number one in this series, we find ourselves on a Ratu set. Hello? Mr. Okay. Probius is... Yeah, he was in charge of building that Nexus. He gets to supervise his work for a little bit as well, although this is completely automated. It's okay, he gets to enjoy a little bit of that. We've got a hidden Stargate over here and then also a Starport on the other side of the map. The thing is, a Ratu set is absolutely massive. It's gonna take a while before any flying unit goes across the map and... It looks like in game number one here, both players are happy to just play a nice little macro game. Here are not going for any of his very, well, commonly played Blink Stalker openers or anything like that. I think we're just going to see him play a nice little macro game. So far, well, the same can be said for Maru. Maru only just now going for some scouting. He doesn't really see much. He already knew that there was a sentry out, though, which usually is an indicator that it's going to be a pretty chill early game for the Protoss. Whenever you see a sentry coming up early on, yeah, they want to be accumulating energy. They want to be using that energy as well for scouting. Usually it means that at the very least you don't have to worry too much about like a, I don't know, a Blink Stalker all-in or cheeky oracles flying around the map. I mean, you can still expect an oracle or two, but they're not going to be rushed quite as quickly because, of course, that sentry is 100 gas in total. So already, the mineral fields over here are being mined out. Hero preparing himself to play a nice, quick, well, at least a reasonably quick third base over here, while making a bunch of phoenixes. So when do you commit with the phoenixes? I feel like I don't get to cast a whole lot of phoenix builds, even though this is like, one of the most common strategies that we see in all of StarCraft 2. It's just that I guess I feature... Yeah, I feature a lot of Hero and I feature a lot of Mech Spec, so I try to bring you the absolute best StarCraft 2 replays that I can find. And it turns out that both Hero and Mech Specs, they prefer playing Blink Stalkers instead. Excellent control right here by Hero. I mean, they both still do mix in Phoenix openers, it's just not quite as common. Especially for somebody, somebody like Mech Specs, he doesn't really... Yeah, he doesn't really play anything but Stalkers. Anyways, on a map like this, you have to mix it up a little bit and... Maru so far not really achieving anything. Nope, zero minerals and zero gas lost so far on this side of Hero. Maru did scout out that at the very least these mineral fields have already mined out, so I guess it's a good indicator that we will be seeing a third Nexus here. 
Ah, I set quick earlier. This is actually pretty late, all things considered. Ah, nothing all too crazy there. It's a Robo Bay on the back of this too, so... Hero just happily macroing up and... Getting some higher tier units going. Phoenix is in the meantime. Okay. Should be able to get a little bit of work done. They have not spotted that Raven that's moving towards the bottom right and corner right now. It's one of those moves that Terrans like to make, even though in theory it doesn't really make a lot of sense, because obviously there's Phoenixes out, and Phoenixes are way faster, they're very good at sniping Ravens, but if the Terran player manages to hide it, obviously, you can drop a bunch of auto turrets into your opponent's base and probably be okay. I wouldn't have minded it either, though, if Mr. Maru decided to keep this Raven at home and accumulate a little bit of uh, energy on it to get some interference matrixes going, because nine times out of ten, Phoenix builds do transition towards Colossi. Anyways, a little bit of target firing right here on the probes. Yeah, is that worthwhile? I guess the Phoenixes are pulled all the way back home too, so that is something to take into consideration, but I'm really not in love with this here for Maru. So three probes for a Raven on its own is already not worth it, and when you think about the amount of value that they can add into the mix, Especially against the Robo Bay follow-up, which happens very frequently after Phoenixes. Ah, I would have liked it better, I think, if that Raven decided to sit at home. Anyways, Maru did make a nice and quick third command center, and he is ready to play that macro game. You know that style that I cast very frequently of Terran players sitting back and just simply absorbing every blow? That is the style that Maru is incredibly good at. He's better at that style than anybody else. So he's very good at playing that turtly approach where... Yeah, he essentially just retracts all of his limbs into his shell, his head is kind of leaned back, you know, and you try and poke at him, but he doesn't really roll over. Very difficult to break Maru when he's turtling, and... After a start like the one that we see in this game, I think that's more than likely going to be his approach. Hero can get aggressive if he wants to, but it's gonna be very tough, and I think Hero is thinking the same thing too. He's looking at what he's seen so far, he's like, you know what, this is gonna be a very tough nut to crack. Or a very tough turtle to roll over? I'm not sure. Anyways, there's a second Stargate together with a Fleet Beacon here. Pretty early, all things considered, especially since this is a Colossus opener. After Phoenixes, right? This is definitely a little dangerous, but... I've seen a lot of Maru games over the years, and whenever Maru is in a situation like this, he will pretty much never attack you. He's gonna sit there and max out and then eventually roll across the map. Even though there are certainly some timing opportunities here for him. Uh, is he gonna have enough time to... Shut down these carriers. I mean, obviously you can scan the opponent's bases, right? I wouldn't mind seeing it. This little marine here. Well, getting absolutely roasted. At the very least, he did see a pylon going up here. So it's a clear indicator that there will be a fourth nexus coming up soon. But honestly, if anything, that's just giving Maru the confirmation that he is A-OK -okay to turtle up here. I don't think that's really going to create a lot of urgency for him. Fourth command center coming up as well for the Terran player. Plus one air weapons. Yeah, we have plus one arrow weapons here, too, for Maru. Both players, man, they are ready to play a long, drawn-out game here in a best of five series. Not sure how long this cast is going to be, by the way. This, um... I'm actually not exactly sure when this video is likely to go up on my YouTube channel. I've been prepping some videos in advance. I was actually scheduled to have a little arm operation. Let me look this up real quick. Uh, but that one got cancelled at the last moment. So, yeah, apparently some emergency came up. I have, like, a... Ah, basically fatty lumps, lipomas that need to be removed on my right arm. So I prepared, like, a week's worth of videos in advance. Pretty minor operation, but I figured I wasn't going to be able to use my, my arm for a little while. Um, and then it got cancelled. So now I've got, like, a... It got moved to next month, basically. It's, I've got, like, a... Yeah, a week, maybe a week and a half's worth of videos already scheduled in advance, which is not normally what I do in my... Yeah, on my YouTube channel at all. Normally I upload the video that I recorded that day and I publish it that day as well. But right now I've got a little bit of headway. Anyways, I just confirmed it with my own YouTube channel. This is very likely going to be the last cast that I upload in 2023. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Shout out, by the way, to those of you that like watching these videos. I had a quick look at my YouTube analytics this morning and I found out that... It's kind of an absurd number, but apparently in total... In 2023, you guys watched, I think, 10 million hours. I was going to say minutes, but no. 10 million hours worth of my YouTube videos in 2023 collectively. That's nuts. Especially since people have told me that StarCraft 2 is a dead game. 
for like literally a decade now. I still get YouTube comments like that, man, where people are like, yo, Loco, why are you still casting StarCraft games? This game is dead, bro. You should switch to something cool or like Fork Knife or League of Legends or Dota or maybe do a little bit of Counter-Strike instead. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. As long as there's people interested in watching RTS games and as long as I can reasonably do this for a living, I think I'm going to be doing what I do. <laughs> Love this game, dude. Couple of promising RTS games on the horizon, too, so... We'll see what 2024 is gonna bring us. Maybe we'll go up to 20 million minutes. Or hours, rather. God, dude, 20... 10 million hours worth? That's insane. Like, I can't even fathom that. So, long story short, thank you guys for watching my videos. Thank you very much for, yeah, supporting me throughout these years and hopefully at least enjoying some of them. Dude, this is a proper game. <laughs> Look at these guys. They're essentially playing Command and Conquer right now, man. 20 minutes, no rush. Battle cruisers coming up. We already have a mama ship out on the battlefield. Carriers are up in pretty big numbers. What is going on here in game number one? Yeah, this is going to be a very long video. Maybe some of you are bored on the 31st of December. <laughs> Waiting until midnight rolls around. Hope you enjoyed this video. <laughs> At least I, I think I'll give you something to watch for maybe... Uh, Upwards of two hours if I'm looking at this right now, man. If this goes to, like, game five... This is probably gonna be, like, literally a two-hour long video. Anyways. It looks like Hero is ready to go for a bit of a move out. Apparently, he's not keen for the 20 minutes no rush, but... He's down for 12 minutes no rush, it seems. This is a very scary Protoss army, but how does it line up against all of these Terran units? Plans, by the way, for 2023, or 2024, rather, more of the same. <laughs> I'm not really planning on making any drastic changes. I want to try and continue uploading high-level games of StarCraft 2. But, like I said, I do want to feature maybe some more Stormgate, maybe some Zero Space, a bunch of other games throughout the year as well, assuming that they will actually be good, you know? Nice little drop right here from Maru, getting 15 workers, but honestly, it's all irrelevant. Like, Hero is not likely to remake those workers. It doesn't matter. He's rather gonna... Yeah, he'd rather replace those those lost worker supplies with... Well, more flying units, right? Or maybe a bunch of stalkers. Or at the very least, things that are gonna make his army stronger. Maru almost doing his opponent a bit of a service there. And maybe he's doing it too, because he wants to get rid of some of his bio ball. Yeah, so he is losing... He's losing a couple of Metafex worth of units, but he's replacing it with straight Sky Terran. He still has some Marines Marauder over here, though. I think they're actually ready on a... I think they're actually on a YOLO run. Yeah. These guys are being sacrificed. To the Protoss gods. Some strange religion right here. In Maru's cult. Very, very, very strange. I think they're basically gonna YOLO themselves into the wall of, of photon cannons. I mean, they can probably beat it. Yeah, I was gonna say, that's quite a lot. So, he's just gonna try and maximize the damage. Okay. You know what, he may be even, uh, he may be even able to cut, uh, kill the Nexus itself. Recall, though, is gonna be utilized in... Yeah, these units. I don't know if they realize what they signed up for. But they are just replaced right now to make supply for more battle cruisers. Okay. So, we're at 6 BCs, 15 Vikings, 3 Ghosts, and 5 Siege Tanks. Battlecruiser army here now being used as a distraction. Obviously, they have an ability called Tactical Jump. It allows them to very quickly teleport across the map. It's a cooldown-based ability. So, yeah, as long as he uses it to jump back home, he should never lose these Battlecruisers. Protoss does not have access to, for example, Fungal Growth that can inhibit any of those movement abilities, so not a whole lot you can do. But, obviously, attacking here may sometimes be the best defense, because this may very well force those units to come back home. There they go. Time Warp gets planted down. We have all of the activated abilities right there from the Mama ship. A lot of damage here being done, though, on both sides. Good zoning as well with those Vikings, by the way. Yeah, those High Templar. We needed another storm or two here. Ah, I say that. I mean, the Interceptors here are doing just fine by themselves. I think, ultimately, Terran should be able to win this fight. Man, if ultimately... If we had, like, two more storms here to continue zoning these Vikings... 
So where do we end up? What is ultimately the result here in this battle? Protoss has lost slightly less throughout this game. Up until this point anyways, because he apparently decided to turn back around. No tactical jump. No, there is tactical jump available on them. Must have been the others that already fell earlier that decided to teleport back home. So nicely done right here by our Terran. Still though, this is a scary attack. This sudden switch back down to Stalkers. Yeah, it can actually really catch you off guard. So Maru is trying to remax here on more heavy hitters, but he's also forced to go back down to Marines and Marauders. What a funky little game here to start this series off. Yeah, big blink forward. I love this blink. This can deal so much damage. Keep in mind that a lot of supply here for our Terran is still caught up in Vikings, and while Vikings aren't absolutely atrocious when it comes to fighting Stalkers, they are not really meant to be doing that. It's more or less just supplemental damage. Yeah, so he decides to land them on the ground? Problem is, when you lose all of those Vikings, those carriers that we had on the production tab are once again gonna get additional value. So lovely work here from Hero. New Stormers have come up as well. Couple High Templar. Three of them, actually. Three is a couple. Great stuff right here by Hero. I'm actually a big fan of this, like, super slow-moving Protoss army. Forcing out a very slow-moving Terran army, too. And then suddenly you come out with a mass stalker warp in. It's a very cool transition. Makes a lot of sense too when you think about it, but historically that's not really what we've seen in SC2. Usually once we go down to the slower late game armies, we stick around with the late game armies, but sometimes, yeah, those early game units, like for example the stalker, can be incredibly handy. You know what, guys? It's taken a long time here for Hero, but he just absolutely destroyed Maru. Like, we're, we're looking at a 50 supply advantage, Way more bases available here as well for the Protoss player. I mean, he can scan that bottom right, but that's not really relevant. Maru really needs another expansion himself. He's only got... Yeah, th no, he's got like four command centers. He needs this base. If he doesn't get this base, he's in a world of trouble. Colossi coming up again as well, by the way, which I do think is a pretty excellent choice. So no more carriers at all. Is there enough for Maru to break through this? Look at the supply count. Even if Hero gets wiped off the map here, which I don't think he will, yeah, he still has more than enough stuff coming across. Yeah, the more I see Maru playing these turnly strategies, the less I like him. It used to be a very strong style a couple of years ago when players weren't entirely sure what to do against it, but I kind of feel like Hero in that previous game played Maru like a fiddle, right? He did an excellent job, just never really allowed the Terran to attack. He read the game very nicely, and honestly, that engagement didn't even really go that great for Hero. If he had a couple more Templar there with a few more Storms, and he could have kept those... those Vikings at bay for a little bit longer, I think he won a f Yeah, he would have won that fight by a landslide. Obviously, that wasn't a great fight for Maru either, all things considered, but... Usually, at least in my experience, it's the Terran player that gets to dictate the pacing of a game like that. So he's the one who's basically saying, yo, we're gonna be playing passively, and it's up to you to break me if you want to, but ultimately I'm not gonna be attacking you, so good luck with whatever you need to do. It's... it's just not that strong a style. I, I'm not a... I'm not in love with it, but Hero... yeah, sorry, Maru, he brings it back constantly. So we'll see what he ends up going for right here on Site Delta. This is a much more normal map. Obviously, Raduset is also yeah, a map that's laid out quite nicely. You get to expand away from your opponent. You have that pocket expansion that you can very easily take. That map is designed to play a bit of a longer game. Well, I say that. It's actually kind of uh, an interesting scenario, right? So, what I've experienced in my own ladder games is because everybody assumes that Raduset is such a good macro map, I've seen a lot of players purposefully cheese so even though technically like a cannon rush or a 12 pool or something like that, right? Doesn't make a lot of sense on Radu set because you can make the assumption that your opponent goes for a quick expansion on the low ground too and play a pretty greedy early game. Usually you can still get some value out of those builds. Maybe that only works at my MMR and below, okay? I can't imagine at this level that's not a particularly relevant style to play. But. Anyways, Hero is gonna be going for that blink upgrade. Okay. I think I would like to see Maru go for a bit more of a conventional style, you know? A little bit of Widow Mind dropping, maybe a little bit of Raven and Ras as a follow-up, and then just timing attacks with Bio. I, I think it's a very good style, but... I mean, I haven't seen that many Maru games as of late. 
I think the last series actually that I've seen Maru play before this one that I'm casting here today is that series that he played against Serral like a month and a half ago. It's been too long, man. If you haven't seen those games though, pff, absolute banger series. I'll go ahead and post a link to it down below in the description of this one so you can go check it out in a little bit. Maybe you still have a couple hours to wait until midnight, you know? Or maybe you're watching this in the new year. Yeah. Anyways. He scouted, Maru that is, that this is indeed a Twilight Council start. So 9 times out of 10, it's going to be that Blink Stalker start. Alright, so this is what Hero is very well known for. We're gonna go up to 4 gateways. So, 4 gate, Blink Stalkers, Prism. This is gonna hit like an absolute truck. This is what Hero uses to dismantle weaker Terrans. This is the style that we see Max Max and Hero specialize in over the last year or so. They're very, very good at microing those stalkers. Now, one problem you run into when you are busy microing on your opponent's side of the map, trying to pick up those stalkers, blink them backwards, the whole shebang, is that one pesky little medevac with a widow mine in it can be an absolute disaster. So I quite like this here from Maru. He sees this attack coming in from a mile away. Will he be able to defend it? We'll find out. Will he be able to deal some counter-attack damage? I think he should wait. No, you shouldn't You shouldn't go in yet. What was that, dude? You just showed your opponent the, the medevac and then you're like, yeah, I'm gonna actually hang out in the corner instead? That was weird. Anyways, here go the stalkers. No defense right here on the low ground. We do have some units in the main base. I think he was predicting that those stalkers would be going up in the main. This is not looking good here, actually, for, for Maru. Yeah, this is not looking all too great for him at all. He can still go into the main base. We need a second siege tank at the very least. Okay, aggressive blink forward. Nice pickup control here. Lovely stuff here by Hero. Did that medevac just get all army hotkeyed back? Okay, he decided to... <laughs> blink. <laughs> okay. That's so random. Why not at the very least try to get some damage done and at least force a couple stalkers to get warped in at home? I'm not sure. He got a stalker or two over here, I guess. Fair, but not in love with this at all here for Maru. Keep in mind that this is not an all-in here for Hero, right? It's more or less like dedicated aggression. You need to get damage done. Oh, he gets there. SS Siege Tank pops. Nice save here. Oh my god. Okay, five hit points right there on that tank. Actually huge. Yeah. Oh, dude. Actually, you know what? If that Siege Tank would have died... If he would have had one more Stalker shot, I think that's pretty much the game. Now that that Siege Tank actually survived, uh, I don't know, maybe Maru is still gonna have a heart. Nah, this is still a disaster for him. I will try and not do the caster thing, okay? That's my New Year's resolution. Do less of the caster thing, where I'm predicting or pretending like the game is much closer than it actually is. This is a disaster for Maru. Uh, you know what? Uh, okay, this sequence of events over the last minute... Not as great there for Protals. Maru is going to be able to get Stimpak done. He will be able to finish up the plus one upgrade, it looks like, as well. So that's nice. Problem is, yeah, here's gateways 5, 6, 7, and 8. We've got ourselves a third Nexus that's well finished. Charge lots on the back of this, too. I've got a feeling that any attack that Maru does right now is going to be... Push back relatively easily. Not too impressed with the defense here from Maru, if I'm being honest with you. I think bringing back that medevac was also kind of questionable. Showing that medevac to your opponent's pylon right there. Like, maybe he didn't predict that there was going to be a pylon. But that's just sloppy, right? Like, there's no reason to rally the, the medevac over here. You should rally it over there instead. Like, those little moves... I don't want to read into them too much. But they don't look great. At least, usually we see Maru play incredibly tidy games. Where, yeah, it's hard to even get any sort of damage done to him. The small moves we've seen him make so far in this series have not been all too impressive. Maru hitting a bit of a supply block too. Oh my god! Hero decides to meet his opponent on his side of the map. Rather than defending at home and using like a battery overcharge or something like that to his advantage. He's like, nope, I'll bring the fight to him. This is a confidence booster right here for Hero, for sure. Once again, good force fields there as well. SCV's having a hard time coming close. 
Also unnecessary, by the way, here for Hero. I don't think he needs to be doing this. But, you know what? Oh, by the way, my scoreboard is messed up. Sorry. I just realized that I... There you go. I hope I didn't confuse anybody. Apparently my scoreboard was messed up. It's 1-0 for Hero in this series. Um, getting a 2-0 lead with as dominant a performance as we see in this game, that is certainly a good enough reason in my mind to bring those units to the other side of the map rather than defend at home, you know? Just rub a little bit of salt in the wound as well. I think that's a medevac full of units. Yeah, four Widow Mines going across the map. These Widow Mines are gonna have to kill 20 probes to justify this. Okay, well, 19 would be a start. Ah. Yeah, no. What am I drop over here? Okay. Getting a little bit more work done, but it's just not gonna happen now. GG is cold, and what looked like a really long series, well, we're already going to match point. Oceanborn is gonna be our third map in this best of five series. We've got ourselves Pretty normal start right here for Hero. He decided to send a probe super early across the map. Maru originally intended on building that barracks here instead, but he was forced to build it over there because there was a probe just being annoying. I think this is this is Hero basically trying to be the younger brother, okay? I mean, I'm a younger brother. I have three older sisters myself. I know very well how to be extremely annoying. This is a craft that I have honed over the course of, well, like 10 years, I guess, when I was a kid. I, I don't think I'm as good at being annoying anymore these days, but this is Hero basically just trying to frustrate the hell out of his opponent. Every little move here is gonna just set Maru further and further off. Doesn't matter that much in the grand scheme of things if you built your barracks over there compared to over here. No. Uh, maybe it's got delayed by a second or two, right? You can, I guess, justify that pretty easily as a Terran because Protoss also had to set a probe across the map right at the very start, but it's just a little bit annoying. I think Hero will probably be going for another 4 gate blink style. I, I don't see why not. I was not too impressed by that defense there from Maru. I don't think Hero was too impressed by it either, although he could just go for like a 2 or even a 3 gate variant. Yeah, these are nice maps for that blink stalker style. Yeah, you have quite a bit of space, I guess, to get into the main base. And yeah, it's, it's, not as, it's not as nice as the previous one, I don't think, but... Once again, going to be the Blink Stalker style. Widow Mines coming up. We'll probably see a Medivac as well. Command Center is going to fly to the low ground. You can see that Maru is playing a safe game now. No longer building that CC on the low ground. Instead, we're going to be building it on the high ground. And we'll be flying it towards right over here, here instead. Okay. Probe over here. Trying to make himself look thick. Nicely done right there by Probius. The thickest of probes. And that's gateway number four. Yep. Wait, I can't count, right? Yeah, yeah. Two plus two is four. Very nice. What RTS unit is that? Two plus two plus? What do you want? I don't know what that voice line is. I think it's a Warcraft 3 unit. I think it's the priest in Warcraft 3? Like the, the healer for... The elves? I think it's a blood elf. Two plus two, what, what do you want? He's like doing a little bit of a math equation. Anyways, he was calculating the amount of gateways that Hero was making in a game against Maru. Back in like 2003, I know. <laughs> back before four gate blink was a thing, or the stalker was a thing. Isn't that beautiful? Great defense right here, excellent defense. That's what we want to see. Quick, tight. Beautiful defense. Yeah. Um, so now what? I mean, the prism obviously is a little bit later now. Because we decided to go for that observer. Observer right here. Checking out precisely where that medevac is located. Okay. Do we have enough to push in? That's the question. Well, we're going to have to get something done at the very least. This attack feels very slow now, somehow. I don't really know exactly what went wrong here. I mean, he didn't take damage, I guess, so that's always nice. Now, a Stalker has also been occupied with defending at home. Is there enough? I think you just go for a third Nexus. I wouldn't mind seeing a third Nexus here for Hero, but... 
When you're going for a timing attack, right, and you kind of get delayed, it's very tricky to still go in and get it done. Okay, well, we are going to try and get it done. Looks like we're one stall for short somehow. Prism also a little too far away. Can we pick up? We can pick up. Loses one additional stalker. Nothing all too terrible. Raven here on the other side of the map being annoying. Medivac still hanging out. Auto turret here. I do really like this auto turret. Super annoying. Deals a bunch of damage. Keep in mind that at this point, Hero hasn't really done that much damage yet on the other side of the map. Okay. Okay. I can't actually see the Widow, or sorry, the Medivac on the minimap. Ah, you can kind of see it. You see that it's like two semi-blue-ish pixels? All the way on the right side of the minimap? There it goes. I usually try and pay attention when that unit goes in. Widow Mind Drop. S the Protoss is distracted! Ten workers go down. And it looks like this attack over here at the front has failed as well. Okay. This is the defense that you do want to see. Yeah, if you're a fan of Terran, this is the defense you're looking for. What exactly are the differences? Well, better control on the side of the Terran, worse control on the side of the Protoss. It's the little things that add up, man. Broadly speaking, this game is near identical to the previous one, and that one was a disaster for Maru. But now he's crossed his T's, he's dotted his I's, and ultimately ends up with twice as much stuff. Now suddenly, this attack here on the back of this is gonna hit like a truck. Somehow, we actually have a pretty late blink upgrade. Not our auto turret going down, yeah. Since there's no phoenixes, obviously, right? That raven is just gonna chill in the bottom right-hand corner. Oh, well, he's not done yet. He's gonna continue trying. Maybe. Two siege tanks now dedicated to defending the main base, though. There's already one over here on the low ground, too. One of the tanks from the main base is gone. Okay, nice little bit of control right here by our Protoss. One more stalker falls right there on the low ground. Uh, siege tank in a good enough spot. I don't think you can really continue this One thing I do like to see here. That's something that max Specs does all the time He loads up the the prism with four stalkers and just harasses over here. Well poking at the front I think that's what we're doing here as hero right now. Yep Oftentimes the four stalkers in the plane can get more damage done than all the stalkers at the front Nice Gets the siege tank. Couple SCVs would be really sweet. Just don't lose the prism, okay? Yep. So this is what I mean. Like, that's really nice. Siege tank plus six SCVs. After this, quote unquote, got shut down. Robo Bay on the back of this. Stalkers occupying the main base. Are there still any units over here on the other side for the Terran? Does not look like it. Did he lose? No. Raven has decided to come back home. Losing the Raven would suck, but nine kills on it? Not bad whatsoever. Yeah, that's what you're hoping for whenever you make a Raven. Basically, the perfect Raven. Alrighty. Um, Stimpak at this point is done. I wouldn't mind seeing Mara go for a bit of a move out. Yeah. Plus one infantry armor is gonna finish up. He will already have the plus one infantry attacks done on all of these marines and marauders. This attack is going to be a scary one. Hero's best defense is the Colossus, but interference matrix from the Raven. You know that Giga chat? Oh, he even pulls the boys. I love it. Very committed. You know this Giga chat over here? I mean, we'd need to research interference matrix. He doesn't actually have it right now. So anti armor missile is gonna be his best choice. Hmm, I would have loved to see the Interference Matrix research, but I guess we want to just get more units going here instead. Is there enough here? There's the Anti-Armor Missile! Beautiful! Is there enough here for the Terran player to break through? He's already lost tons of SCVs. Those are the SCVs that he brought to the front. Good force field. Really lovely battery overcharge too, but that Colossus, man. ay ay ay! it just got destroyed. Widow Mines over here, burrowing! Boom! 16 probes. And up going down. And Maru, he gets a point on the board. Hecate is gonna be our fourth map for today. No cheeky early game here from either player. Hero has not gone for the probe scout at all, so he doesn't know what his opponent is doing. Instead, he's just opening up as normal as possible as he once again decides to go for the Twilight Council. Do you think he's gonna go four gate blink again? It's certainly an option. 
I think I would prefer seeing like three gate into a Nexus instead. Is Maru gonna go for some sort of drop shenanigans once again? I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing it. it seemed to be very successful. Yeah, I love Ravens, especially against Stargate based, or sorry, against non Stargate based openers. Obviously, you never really know exactly what you're playing against when you start up that Raven, so it's a little bit awkward. You just kind of cross your fingers and hope it works out for you. Once again, Blink. Doesn't surprise me. Once again, a Starport. And it's a Cyclone here on the back of this. Yeah, a lot of scoutless plays here from Maru. It's interesting. So he only scouts his side of the map for, like, proxy gateways or something along those lines. And then he finally figures out what's going on in his opponent's side of the map when he sends the Hellion across. So this is the first time he sees that there's even a Protoss in this game. Sentry after this, by the way, as well here for Hero, so after the... Okay, nice, nicely done here by Maru. He's gonna see the Sentry, that's huge. Okay, is it a Stargate? It's not. Perfect. So this is gonna be three gateways, a Robo Bay, or a Robo Facility rather. This will be a quicker expansion here for Hero, for sure. Can we bring any Marines across? No, it's just gonna be the Cyclone. Okay. Cyclone inside of the Metavec. I always look at this as a Overlord killing hit squad, but... <laughs> not a lot of Overlords in the Terran versus Protoss matchup last time I checked. Some good piloting right here, man, by the Metavec. Look at that. Could have gotten stuck on any of those tree's branches, but... Oh, well... I mean, <laughs> I think he just clipped through that tree. Anyways, we're gonna go into the main base with this Metavec instead. Get a little bit of work done. Blink finishes up. Okay. Hallucinated Phoenix here sees exactly what's going on and... Yeah, it looks like neither player really has an intention here to get too aggressive anytime soon. There's the Raven coming up. We will likely see a probe heading down to the low ground to make a Nexus here. In just a couple seconds. Well, we even have a Templar Archives on the back of this too here for Hero. So, yeah. It kind of, broadly speaking, looks like the same build that he played in the previous games, but... Not quite the case. He's a lot less committed. So, three gateways rather than four. Sentry here. Well, a third Nexus soon as well. Templar Archives. Yeah. Broadly speaking, if you have very bad eyesight, this may look like the same game for Protoss. But it really isn't. All of the same tools, but different quantities. Alright. Is Maru gonna go for a timing attack at all? I guess he did go for a timing attack in the previous game. But that was more or less just a reaction to seeing his opponent's attack flop, right? So he saw that, hey, I am going up against a Protoss player who doesn't really get a lot done. That Stalker push of his didn't really go... Yeah, didn't go particularly well. I also got a bunch of damage done with my own Raven. Now, I'll decide to pull the boys and go for a big attack. I like it, but will he go for an attack when, for example, all of these upgrades finish up instead? Because that's when we normally see Terrans moving out. Stimpak, Combat Shields, plus one infantry weapons. It's the Golden Trio. It's what we usually see Terran players make use of. Nice little bit of repair micro over here, keeping that SCV alive for at least a little bit longer. Alright. The thing is, this attack... ...it's gonna be met, if he does decide to go for the move out, it's gonna be met by a bunch of High Templar. Zealots that smoke weed, they get elevated to the rank of High Templar, and uh... ...they'll be able to get that Sonic Storm upgrade, right? Super useful. A lot more reliable as well, it seems, than Colossi can sometimes be. At least until the Terran decides to go for any sort of ghosts. But, generally speaking, we won't see ghost play until there's at least, like, three base economy for Terran. Yep, and Hero now confirms that there is no such thing as a third command center, at least not just yet. So, Stimpak is done. Combat Shield's finishing up right now. Plus one infantry weapons, also a couple seconds away from finishing. Triple Medivac drop on the right side of the map. Lovely spotter pylon over here, though, for Hero. It's gonna give him, at the very least, the heads up that there's a good chance we're gonna see some units here. Widowmine, okay, decides to be left behind. Stalker's in the main base, already hanging out. The rest of the Terran army, though, coming dangerously close, but now this push is quite delayed here for Maru. Keep in mind, he's only at 48 SCV, or, sorry, yeah, 50 SCVs right now. Okay, not the best storms. One of the Templar also fell, but just having those Templar available, good blink. 
super handy. Great defense here so far by Hero. He's got far less army supply. A 30 supply deficit there. So he can't just charge in, but he can keep this uh, the terror player here at bay. Third command center, by the way, has started up on the other side of the map. Okay, big storms. Yeah, this choke point is just not it, man. You can heal these units up for a while, sure. Okay, we're gonna go for another warp in. Drop into the main base, though. So far, Maru has not really done a lot of damage. Push over here, will get cleaned up. So those leftover units absolutely shut down. Pylons in the main base, though, are also getting shut down. Getting the forge here would be nice, but the ground weapons just finished up, so I think this is okay. Prism, together with two Archons, can do some really nice juggling. I don't mind this for Hero. Nope. It's an uncomfortable defense, maybe, but I think he managed that just fine. Terran, in the meantime, by the way, has been oversaturating his bases. There we go. Yeah, so worker-wise, he's actually not in a bad spot. I'm not in love with it, I guess, for a hero either, right? It's a bit of a tricky situation to be in, but he did kill a lot of very precious Terran pushes, and he held on. I would love to see a fourth Nexus. I think another base here would be incredibly nice. Anyways, here's the next step in the Terran arsenal. It's gonna be a Ghost Academy. So this is the most, the, the most normal game that we've seen so far between these two. I think we are gonna go for another Nexus momentarily, or maybe over here on the right, but... Eh, hero. Not really rushing that out anytime soon. Remaking the forges instead, going for a Robo Bane, so... Rather than building up his economy, he's decided to build up his tech. Okay, three Widow Mines got out before the Medivac got sniped. I think that's okay, though. Seven probes against four Widow Mines, or four four Widow Mines, and then also a Medivac. Pretty cost-efficient trade. So if we're not gonna go for another base here, Hero, we're gonna have to get something done on the other side of the map. Problem is, Colossi kinda suck until they get their ranged upgrade. Yeah, if we're gonna make double upgrades here in the Forge, we can't really attack before those upgrades are done. Okay, we have a little bit of a Zealot counter-attack now. Five Zealots, four SCVs, not quite worthwhile. Depot's not lifted. Stalker's over here waiting as well on the bridge over at the third base location, but plenty of units are available here. Hmm. You know what? These Zealots are getting way more work done than I thought they would. Stalker's here in the meantime now at the front, trying to just create a bit of a distraction. Stimpak is gonna activate. All right, gets one Depot. Now the fourth Nexus goes down, now the Extended Thermal Lens starts up, and we finally go for a Stargate 2. <coughs> I wonder if this is the best follow-up right here from Hero, though. I mean, he's one of the very best Protoss players in the world, but I feel like... Max Pax would have already had that fourth Nexus done at this point, right? So, the reason why Hero is making all of these units is because he's afraid of this particular move out right here. Maru ready to go in. Good feedback right there on that first ghost. Yeah, that observer, pretty obvious now. Hero knew exactly where his opponent's units were gonna be coming in from. Maybe Hero is just ready to play another macro game, just like we saw in game number one, you know? Maybe he just wants to go into that fleet beacon again. No intention, though, for Maru just yet. To go for any sort of late game style. Instead, he's going for a 4th Command Center. He's building up his 2-2 Research. Plus one Arrow Weapons coming up as well. There's the Fleet Beacon. Yep. So Hero just happy to play that macro game once more. That explains the timing on the 4th base. He's just trying to play Survival Mode. Good feedbacks. Wonderful feedbacks. Very easy to accidentally feedback, like for example, a Medivac there. EMP over the little crevice, is that possible? <laughs> Wouldn't mind seeing it. Plus one air weapons coming up. Second Stargate. So, Hero just once again aiming for that maxed out Skytel's army here. And wouldn't be surprised if he's gonna make a big switch down after trading units with the opponent towards a mass stalker. Still thinking of that first game of the series, I'm sure. Different approach to getting there, but certainly. Yeah, it doesn't matter too much, right? As long as you get there eventually, it's all good. 
Maru's been dancing though over here for a while. He's not really wanting to fight unless he can find a great angle until 2-2 is done. And those upgrades? Well, they're finishing momentarily. Looks like he's getting into a really good position here. This could be a banger of a fight. If Maru can pull the trigger somehow in like two seconds? Yeah, he's scared of the storm. Nothing to be afraid of. All of us can be scared of storms sometimes, Maru. It's been very rainy where I'm located. It's been raining an absurd amount. It can be a little bit scary sometimes, Maru. I get it, man. Yeah, getting your army stormed, though, as it's trying to retreat down, <laughs> down a ramp is not quite what you're aiming for. Two carriers on the production tab. He's gonna hide those. Viking numbers are growing. Would not mind seeing the plus three upgrades starting up as well for Hero for his ground units. Mass Zealot counterattack. Oof. Um, are we gonna just sacrifice the Zealots though? Yeah. We're gonna have to follow this up with something here. Carrier at this point gets scouted, but that's a lot of Zealots going down. Like, six SCVs is really nothing to write home about. That was a lot of Zealots, no? I think that was like 30 Zealots or something. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I really like this game until, like, the triple base defense for, for Hero, right? Like, that defense was pretty good, and then all of the decisions after that have been a little shaky. Not bad. But I kind of feel like Maru gets to control the pacing of this game a little bit too comfortably. Now he also knows that there are carriers here. Fifth command center coming up. Well, I say fifth, but it's actually the seventh. There's four mining bases at the moment, though. Maybe this one gets to be dedicating himself towards mining these minerals, or at least getting the minerals returned to. All right. Problem for Maru, though, is like, yeah, this game is comfortable, right? Life's nice. But how in the world do you beat this army? It's not gonna happen quickly, I can tell you that much. A good snipe right there on one of those carriers. Another one of those carriers running low on hit points. Zealots trying to come in from the back. Yeah, the map layout makes it very tricky for the Terran to find an angle, although maybe killing this base would be possible. Yeah, he's scared. He scans, he sees that army coming in. Already was retreating, however. Good splits. If the Protoss decides to chase him down the ramp, of course, that's when he would take the fight. But Hero is not going to be taking that bait. Couple Zealots here trying to be annoying. Again, not achieving much. How many Zealots have gone down? You have 48 Zealots throughout this game. There have been more dead Zealots than Marines and Marauders combined. Advanced Ballistics here, researching now for Maru. Just command centers, left, right, and center. And it does get to be the fifth base. See? Thank you for making me look smart, Maru. I appreciate it. Ooh, okay. We're gonna go for proxy missile turrets in the middle of the map. That's when you know a Terran is feeling particularly confident. Can we just knock down these rocks, please? Why, why are we, like, constantly hugging the rocks? Doesn't it only benefit Protoss here, or am I mistaken? What's the Terran's advantage here to having these rocks? He's the one trying to push up the ramp. <laughs> He's the one going up against a lot of splash damage. Anyways. Yeah, so these missile turrets and that sensor tower here are super helpful. Carriers are gonna have a hard time chasing this army down. Mama ship coming up. An offensive recall to the other side of the map would be lovely. Also important, though, that Hero, yeah, or sorry, that Maru doesn't get over-eager here with all of this stuff. Because that's a lot of resources tied up into just a little bit of fun, right? Like, this is nice and all, but Zealots can clean that up pretty easily. 48 Zealots? Guess what? They would clean that up in a heartbeat. Yeah. New upgrade coming up right here, the Caduceus Reactor. Random Observer, getting all army hotkeyed in there. This increases the Medivac energy regeneration rate by two. Okay. 
Nice counter right here, though, by Hero. Yep. Breaking out of that soft contain that his opponent has been playing for a little while. There she is. Mama! Ooh, woo, woo. Ooh, woo, woo, woo. The mothership is a bit of a weep. Yeah, that's true. Anyways, it's got a lot of useful abilities these days that are all cooldown. All cooldown based, that is. So no more energy here on the mama ship. Very handy. But it also has lost some of its, well, passive abilities. Like, for example, cloaking. It used to just simply cloak everything underneath itself. But these days, it's the cloaking that is an activated ability. Maro happy to play the macro game here once again, it looks like. Just expanding wherever he goes. Okay. Very ambitious prism. Does get a massive storm off, though, with that Templar. That was its cargo. Command center. Yeah, setting itself up in a pretty stuffed position here. This is this is a difficult game for a hero, man. Like, Maru doesn't have to play like this. He could just try to go for a bit more of an aggressive style. But he's just choosing to play this slow and methodically. There's that cloaking field getting activated. Do we have any Templar in the mix? Yeah, we sure do. There's six of them out on the map in total. I think there's like three or so, maybe four in this army. No, it's all six in his army. <laughs> all right, fair enough. Zealots, okay, trying their best to kill the planetary fortress. Even without the building armor upgrade, though. It's still holding strong just fine. Big fight over here as well. In the meantime, over at the Terran's fourth base. This one is also falling flat on its face. Looks like the Zealots also had to retreat from fighting that planetary fortress. Excellent movement right here by Maru. Forcing the recall, getting the mothership, sniping a bunch of carriers. This is that style that Maru is so dang good at. It's beautiful when it goes well. Yeah, a lot of Terrans try to copy this style and it falls flat on its face every single time. GG is gold. Excellently played right here by Maru. Alrighty, the rubber match. Maru found himself with a 2-0 deficit just about a half hour ago. But now he's managed to even up the score. Our final game for today, it takes place on the map Alcyone. Yeah, I think that previous game is an excellent example as to why Maru is feared as a Terran player. Incredibly difficult to break. He was essentially winning that game ever since he first went across the map, right? But then he like slowly, rather than win the game right away, he slowly suffocates his opponent. Right, he's just squeezing a little harder every time. He's like, just go to sleep, buddy. Just, just, hey, hero. Hero, just, just go to sleep, man. Don't worry about it. And, and he does that for like 15 minutes straight. Very painful. Very nasty too, by the way. But hey, I guess it worked out. Now, we do have a Zealot out on the map. That Zealot has been battered and bruised by the Reaper. Reaper now on the other side of the map is going to be able to sneak away. This command center SCV is, uh, yeah, you better stay on that side of the command center, buddy, because you're going to be in a lot of trouble otherwise. Okay. Phoenix opener here, once again from Hero. Yeah, we did Stalkers three games in a row. Yeah, worked decently well, but nothing to write home about. We're not going to be juggling, though, a bunch of Stalkers in this game inside of a prism and hope that everything goes right. Apparently, we're 1-0, uh, yeah, we're 1-0 once, we, <laughs> we one oh once again, there you go. We want to once again go for a little bit of Phoenix shenanigans into, I guess, Colossus. Only time will tell. Cyclone's being used for base defense. Kind of nice, yeah. Not a very commonly seen unit ever since it got its overhaul, right? We used to see it as an all-in for a little bit, but yeah. Not super popular in the current meta. We do see Terrans trying to mix it in every once in a while. I mean, we've seen some excellent games, for example, from Hero Marine, right? The Hero Marine versus Rainer series comes to mind, where... Well, Hero Marine went for some crazy mech-based all-ins. I have seen it a few times since, but overall, not a very common style. I would not mind seeing some more of it, because it seemed really strong, but... I guess Zerk players and Protoss players have, uh, yeah, got some sort of answer that makes Terran players not comfortable to play that Cyclone all-in all too frequently. Although this is a scary push. Maru actually going for... Yeah, dedicated pressure over here in the earlier stages of this game. 
He wants to deny a third com or a third, well, Protoss command center. Nice lift off right over here on those Phoenixes. One of the Phoenixes is gonna go down, but the Immortal incredibly handy. Okay, he's trying his best to micro these Cyclones as well using that Medivac. Adept there loses its life because of that Cyclone's lock on. Okay, losing the Immortal here would be pretty bad for Hero. But as long as he keeps it alive, I think it is okay. Third command center starts up in the meantime, confidently, on the low ground, at the third base location. There's one pylon powering all of this, shutting it down would be nice. One more Phoenix pops out. Okay, we're gonna target fire down that Immortal. Uh, Medivac lives with only two health. Yeah, now suddenly, okay. What looked like an amazing fight right here for Maru is turning out to be a very tight one. Yeah, if you would have shut down that, that pylon, maybe. In the meantime, a Liberator, by the way, getting some work done too. Super annoying. No Phoenix is actually available at the moment. Hmm. Okay, that's actually seven probes. Yeah, now you show up. <laughs> I was called on the winds of justice. Sure, Mr. Phoenix. Sure, bro. You can have all these epic voice lines, but... That ain't it. You're a little late now. Interference Matrix, together with the Raven. Okay. Hero right now, going for the uh, counter-attack. Was that command center on the low ground a little too ambitious? Well, it looks like the Liberator has bought enough time to, at the very least, yeah, allow this command center to finish up. If Hero would have gone straight across the map, I actually wonder if it maybe could have prevented this command center from ever finishing. Right now, though, not the case. Yep, it looks like Maru is gonna be able to keep that command center alive. Why even build it on the low ground in the first place, man? I don't understand. Just build it over here. It's a very short flight. I mean, he intended on, I guess, not losing that medevac, right? And microing ever so slightly better there. Because he also lost one of the Cyclones early on in that exchange. He was ready to boost in, but then his medevac was just slightly out of position. It's a small difference, but maybe if that second Cyclone would have stayed alive for a little bit longer, he could have just won with that particular attack of his. Anyways. Third Nexus coming up. Twilight Council on the production tab. Phoenixes, Colossi, Extended Thermal Lens. Stim pack, combat shields, plus one infantry weapons, plus one infantry armor. Both players taking a bit of a breather here, okay? Yeah, they may act really scary right now. They're basically making their muscles look big, right? They're flexing in their opponent's face, like, don't fight me because I'm really strong and really cool. But in reality, neither of them is really fighting or, or ready for a fight at this point. I mean, Hero may try. Sure. He's done a lot of push-ups at this point, so, you know. His pecs and his, uh, his delts are looking pretty swell at this point, but he's gotta be careful. I mean, getting the command center would be massive. Oh, Maru. Oh, no. Maru, no way, dude. Oh, that's painful! That's actually so rough! That was not supposed to happen. Maru getting a little over-eager. Losing that command center? is absolutely atrocious. Maru has already got 30 SCVs on the low ground. He wanted to transfer, well, about that many to the third base option, but now he's heavily oversaturated. Hero is low on the worker count in total, but at least he's got the third base ready to go. So this is one of those awkward scenarios where like Maru is leading the worker count, but he's probably losing the income. New third command center starts up, gets delayed for a little bit longer as well, since the Phoenix has swooped in and lifted up the SCV. Okay, yep. Maru instead has decided he's gonna put all of his eggs in one basket. Keep in mind, he does have Ravens, they do have Interference Matrix this time around. Really? Hero is actually thinking about going for the counter-attack instead. Either that or he has missed his entire opponent's move out. Okay, you know what? If Maru can suddenly jump this army, that could be massive. There's an Interference Matrix, another one going down as well. Only one Colossus. No, zero Colossus currently enabled. And what looked like a crazy base race here was actually this hero missing his opponent's move out. He decides to warp in additional units. The Interference Matrix is wearing off. Oh, hero, you gotta be so careful here. I thought he was gonna try and recall, and instead he decides to warp in reinforcements here instead. You know what? This fight is actually working out reasonably well for him. <sighs> what a decision. 
Gets another tank as well. Yeah, it's only Marauders here available. Just Jimmy here using his combat drugs to try and, well, gun down a couple of those Phoenixes. And apparently Jimmy managed to get it done because the Phoenixes decided to flutter away. Okay. Yeah, finally. Ten minutes into the game. After he started up a third CC, what seems like hours ago at this point. Does the third CC land over here on the low ground in a relatively stable state? Oh, getting getting the mule would be nice. Yeah, he wants it, but he's not going to be able to. These phoenixes, though, can be exceptionally annoying. Obviously, they do need energy to be able to lift up stuff. Another nexus coming up all the way on the left side of the map. Now, it's important here for Hero to not feel too good about himself, okay? It is very easy to look at that previous fight and think, Oh my god, I'm so good at the game! Look at me, dude! And then Terran moves across the map and just murders you, right? We've seen many games like that. Uh, I would love to see plus two at the very least start up sometime soon, but Maru has decided to cut that corner. Yeah, I think that's an armory right here. Yeah, very late on the armory. He's decided to cut that corner until just now to try and just simply build more units. So his unit count is pretty good. He is gonna fall behind in upgrades though. Okay, this is good. Ah, ish. It's not like Protoss has got a ton of upgrades here either, right? Only a single forge, researching plus two. It's nothing to really write home about. Does Maru know about that new base? I think he may have seen movement. Yeah, he sees movement right there with a scan from the third Nexus location towards the left side of the map. So he should be able to put one on one together. One plus one is... What do you want? No, that was my worst impression so far. My Warcraft unit impressions aren't that good. I hear and obey! <laughs> what is the... I always like the Zeppelin. The Zeppelin is pretty amazing in Warcraft 3. Anyways. Let's see. Maru, can we get some work done over here? Hero decides to bring this fight to his opponent's side of the map. It's making me a bit uncomfortable, I'm not gonna lie. Pushing up the high ground, not very easy. He's trying to buy time. His economy is nothing really to write home about either. Good EMP right there on at least some of the Phoenixes, it looks like, but still quite a bit of energy remaining. Maru wants to hit his opponent in the face really badly, and you know what? He may just be able to, because Hero is marching around this map like he owns it, but he actually has the worst army. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, if he can fight in the right location, though, if he can lift up some of those important units, if he can prevent EMPs, it certainly is possible. A couple good Widow Mine hits over here. A couple of the Zealots get weakened as well at the front. Do you really need to fight this, hero? Disruptor. Is that the first Disruptor of this series? I think it might just be. Fourth Command Center flying on over towards the left side of the map. Plus two infantry weapons coming up. No infantry armor. Continued chrono boost right there on whatever. Getting those upgrades going. Very nice. Second forge coming up here too for hero. Okay. Yeah, he's looking for an angle, but I kind of feel like he should be happy he can't find an angle. Because I think in a straight up fight he probably loses. Okay, well, I say that. I guess we'll find out. A lot of the siege tanks getting... Yeah, they just get decimated before that fight even properly began. Hero fights for a second. Kills the important units and then backs off. Planetary Fortress coming up here as well over at that fourth base location. Apparently we're just gonna let it slide for now. Would have not minded seeing those six zealots coming up over there on the left side of the map instead. Now though, there is a Disruptor in the mix. And Disruptors, you cannot EMP. So Maru is gonna have to split against it. He's found an angle. Yeah, Hero has found a really lovely angle here. He's pushed his opponent up towards this high ground. SCVs are pulled away from their mineral lines too. Is there enough right here for the Terran to stay alive? Nerfication Nova shuts down a big chunk of that Terran army. Still though, Maru is carving a path through the main base over here, through the low ground. One of the disruptors, all army hotkey move <laughs> forward. Another disruptor though, coming from left field, trying his very best to get as much damage done as possible. Vikings in the meantime have killed a lot of the important units. Is there still enough left over here though for a hero? Okay, it looks like he is going to be going back home. All of the Metavex are out of energy at this point, too. One more Disruptor, another Immortal falls down as well. hi yi yi What a nail-biter of a fight. That could have gone so many different ways. And ultimately, it looks like it's just a wash. Both units, or both sides rather, losing tons of their important units. 
Plus three. Plus three. Researching. No, actually, that's plus two. Never mind. The fourth command center was made. I would have loved to see a couple zealots getting warped in over here while the planetary was still morphing in. But I guess Hero didn't want to do that. Maybe he forgot that he made a, a gateway there or something. I'm not exactly sure. That was a bit strange, but... Okay, both players are going to have to rebuild their army. Generally speaking, that seems to benefit the Terran. Because they rebuilt units that produce really quick, right? Marine Marauder, Medivac, Mine, Ghosts. Those are not units that take seven years to make. Whereas on the Protoss side of things, yeah, we have to make the Colossi and then also make enough buffer units in front of it. It's a bit more of a delicate balance, I guess, for the Protoss player compared to the Terran. Still, though, it doesn't look like this army here from Hero or from Maori Rudder is going to go across the map and finish the game. I, I don't think that's really his intention. I also don't think he currently can do anything along those lines anyways. He's been moving around the map and now we finally load up the units? Very dangerous. He scans and he sees that there's a mass amount of Protoss over here. Okay, Metavex. They do get intercepted. Looks like one Metavex falls, but that was the one without the units in it. And at the very least, those Marauders ended up getting a kill as well. <sighs> Gateway, by the way, still gets to live. <laughs> All right. This Metavex movement scares me a bit, Maru. That's 40 supply-ish of Terran units that aren't really helping out in a fight if it were to take place. Plus, they achieved very little. Okay, Hero getting back into that same position once again. His army is looking pretty good. We have two Disruptors in the mix. Here's the Prism. Rinse and repeat from what we had earlier. Apparently, Hero believes that he could have done a better job here, and I guess we'll find out. That is a lot of Colossi once again. How many Vikings do we have? Only five Vikings. I think Maru assumed that this was going to be a full-on disruptor transition here. He is not prepared to fight this many Colossi. Those Colossi are going to have an easy-peasy time. Two Vikings coming up all at the same moment as well. Okay, at the very least, the Vikings ended up getting the cancel right there on that Prism Warping because they ended up sniping down the Prism. In the meantime, though, the Colossi are putting in so much work. Now the Colossi, yeah, have turned their lasers onto that bio army. Vikings are slowly starting to get rid of them, but most of that Terran economy right now is gone. Maru holds, but at what cost? 28 SCVs just ended up going down here. What a banger of a final game between these two. I think Hero is managing to get it done. But he still needs to be on his tippy toes, man. Those mules, yeah, they don't mess around. I don't know if Maru has enough stuff to really go for an all-out attack. Now, after those Vikings come out, Hero is making a full transition towards Disruptors. So now suddenly, yeah, those Vikings, those seven of them, which is like half the Terran army, not nearly that useful. A lot of Zealots available. That's actually a ton of Zealots available. 18 Zealots have just been warped in. Plus three armor also on the production tab. Pushing into the planetary fortress, not really something that Hero wants to do, but the road to the natural as well as the third base is wide open. Does he have a prism nearby? He does not have a prism at all. So this is going to be a little bit risky. Yeah, I was going to say, you need to be able to reinforce this. Good pushback right there from Maru. Maru's slowly trying to rebuild his SCV count. It's not a bad idea. Oh, are we going to fight the planetary? Are you sure, Hero? Oh, I feel like that's the one way this game could go horribly wrong. It could also go horribly right. <laughs> but fighting a planetary that's being repaired? I don't know, man. I think it was mostly just a distraction. Yeah, he successfully distracted Maru as well as me. Trying to get those zealots to get some damage done. Good crisis management, though, but that's an additional three SCVs going down. That's like 10% of Maru's entire economy at this point. Another Nexus building all the way at the bottom of the map. Hero looking for a maxed out army once again. Are we gonna fight this? I think we are gonna fight this, yeah. No way, especially with that Terran army. Caught in the middle of the map. No way for Maru to save it. He didn't see where that army was located because he lost all of his tools over the last couple of minutes. It's Hero who comes back after losing two games in a row to win the series over Maru 3-2.